Here is the submedian point x6 of the triangle ABC. And this picture, this diagram, is taken from Clark Kimberling's website. The submedian point is very interesting 19th century development because it uses this idea of isogonal conjugate. And that's such a very powerful and flexible notion that it really somehow transformed triangle geometry at the time. So how does that happen? Or what happens here? Well, here is the centroid, point X2, which is the meat of the three medians of the triangle. And over here, this is the in-center of the triangle. That's the meat of the angle bisector, is what I like to call bylines in green. Now, if we look at one of these medians here, and we look at the corresponding angle bisector that's emanating from the same vertex, then we can see what this third line is. It's the reflection of the median in the angle bisector. So we're thinking of the angle bisector as a mirror and reflecting this median in the angle bisector to get this line. And similarly, if we take this median and reflect it in this angle bisector, then we get this line. And finally, if we take this median reflected in this angle bisector, then we get this line. And all those three new red points, or three new red lines, meet in the Semedian point. Now, what makes this particularly fascinating is that this same game will apply no matter what point in the triangle you start with. So we started with the centroid in this case, and we got the Semedian point. But if we start with some arbitrary point and draw lines from the vertices to that point, and then reflect those lines in the corresponding angle bisectors, just as we did here, then those three reflected lines would meet in a new point, which would be the isogonal conjugate of whatever point that we started with. And this is a great thing because it means that whenever we have a triangle center, we can take its isogonal conjugate and we get a new triangle center.